And now it is my pleasure uh, to announce the next speaker. Uh, it's Dr. Tina Schlingmann. Uh, she is Regional Director, Europe, Middle East, and Africa at EOS. And the next presentation will be about 3D printing. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Dr. Schlingmann was not available to come here on short notice, but uh, we, we will try to have her here virtual with us now. Um, Dr. Schlingmann, are you already here with us? Can you hear me? Yes, uh, I Perfect. can hear you and I hope you can also hear me. Yes, we can hear you very well. Thank you very Perfect. much for making this possible and joining, joining <laughs> online. Uh, you're looking at the audience, smiling at the audience. Everyone is anxious and excited to, to hear your presentation and uh, the stage is yours. Yeah, thank you very much for that uh, kind introduction and uh, sorry that I'm not joining. Maybe you hear it a bit. I had a very bad cold and uh, so uh, I avoid traveling. Um, but yeah, I will uh, show you my presentation now uh, online and um, share my screen with you. Okay, so high strength aluminum alloy meets responsible manufacturing and 3D printed parts with uh, EOS 2139. It's my topic today. But uh, yeah, I want to start my presentation with a little throwback actually of my own career because um, maybe some people know me from uh, Deutsche Bahn or from Otto Fuchs, and uh, my career starts in a big forging company um, where I found myself not in this environment, but uh, between big uh, furnaces of heat treatment and big forging machines. Um, and I had the big luck that, um, that uh, I start in the innovation management where we were implementing the technology of additive manufacturing. And uh, this opens completely new possibilities. And I found my real passion there. And I want to share this with you because um, with additive manufacturing, it's now possible to think designs from a completely new aspect. And for instance, um, having a heat changer here, um, mimicking a sea anemone. And we as EOS uh, call this purpose-driven design which means that we start with the purpose, that we start with the function of the part we want to manufacture, we want to print, and coming from that perspective, um, designing the part. And I want to give you some examples. You have seen already now two pictures of heat exchanger, and here is the third picture. And also from a lightweight aspect, I think it's a real new possibility and a chance because with additive um, design and purpose-driven design it was uh, possible in this case that uh, we improved the efficiency by 300 percent higher heat injection but also when it comes to the lightweight aspect it was possible that um, we reduced the weight 22 percent and this also gives us the chance to reduce uh, the footprint to have a very small footprint and improve the thermal management. And I want to continue with some more examples with some more applications. So here, for instance, a heat injection head for the Ariane um, mission critical class one component and um, we, with additive manufacturing and our purpose-driven design, we could reduce um, the conventional manufactured part with 248 parts to a single part. And that was, uh, or because of this, um, we could uh, reduce the weight by 25% and also um, reduce the production cost by 50%. And last but not least, had the big benefit that um, we could reduce the lead time from three months when it was casted before to 35 hours. 
Another example um, is our dual function injector. And here we had the challenge um, to um, um, we had the challenge to increase the productivity. Um, and it has some interesting features also from a sustainability perspective. So in use, um, this copper inductor needs about 60% lower energy. And that's good for your electricity bill, of course, but also for the environment. And it has a higher productivity, up to two and a half times lower service life and therefore higher productivity. And uh, when I was talking now about um, purpose-driven design, um, I want to change a bit the perspective, um, which, um, um, which is now um, another perspective when it comes to customization, because this is also one um, yeah, one view you can have on additive manufacturing. And um, I want to share this impressive example with you um, for, um, for an implement for the hat. So here it was possible that we could print this having the CIT scan already by the um, operation at the hat. And by printing this part, and of course this customized part, it was possible to reduce scrap and waste due to um, the demand production. And again, another perspective on additive manufacturing is on demand and decentralized production, which brings me also a bit into the history of my own career before I was working three years for the German railways. And there we had exactly this topic. And also this topic is um, known from Daimler buses. And <clears throat> with additive manufacturing, we have the big benefit that we have uh, less warehouse costs, less transportation costs, less overproduction, and you only buy what you need and have um, no storage costs. So I think this is from a lot of um, aspects, a really um, interesting point of view. But when I show you now all these um, very beautiful and expressive examples and we think a step ahead and want to industrialize this all and see this as our new way to manufacture things, um, then I think there is one aspect you really need to take into consideration. And this is still a challenge, I would say. The aspect is that we want to make sure to have a really reprodu reproducible, a reliable technology. And in the end, the big goal, and it's very important, I think, that we can say we can trust into this technology. And for this, and uh, I know that on the light corn is uh, Stefanie Brickwede and uh, Cora Lüders Teuerkauf, and uh, they both have uh, presentations. Um, so, because of this topic, uh, we together at Mobility Goes Additive at MGA, um, we said, okay, we're facing this challenge. Um, and I think you might have seen this slide already. So, for all those ones who haven't seen the slide, just to give you a very quick overview who is joining this uh, leading international network. We have uh, the users, we have the service providers, we have um, universities, we have machine uh, suppliers, so also EOS, of course. Um, we have consultancies, we have IT companies, but also uh, companies producing um, materials. And out of those uh, group, we are working in working groups and I have initiated uh, four years ago the biggest working group in Mobility Goes Additive, which is uh, materials. And together in materials, um, we faced this challenging I was talking before about and said, OK, how can we understand how reproducible and how reliable is our technology? And we said, OK, let's imagine we have a company and we have different production um, uh, locations 
And in the end, our challenge and our big uh, idea is that we have the same reproducible quality and the same standard everywhere. And we did a kind of, let's say, simulation in the group um, and said, OK, we or maybe one slide back um, on the, in the left hand side of the slide, you can see the companies who were joining um, this uh, test and we said, OK, we do a round robin test together. So what have we done? We were sitting a couple of years on a big table. I know it was at uh, Volkswagen at those times and uh, we defined together an alloy, which is uh, ALSI 10 MG. And we defined parameters. We defined together the STL files we want to print. We manufactured our specimens and then uh, we did the testings, fatigue testings and further examinations at GKN at those times. And of course, we evaluate afterwards uh, the results and shared it. And today I want to share some results or some insights with you. So uh, on the left hand side, again, you see the companies who were taking part in this um, in this test and we um, manufactured in total four, 420 fatigue specimens and 70 testing specimens. And also we were forging, by the way, some specimens, well, knowing that we will have completely different results here and did a lot of other examinations like measuring the roughness or the part chemistry or the particle size distribution and so on. And um, yeah, it's we have so many results now and uh, you can also buy them as a study at MGA, by the way. But today I give you just uh, an idea and to make you a bit curious um, because I'm really proud and I think it's really impressive what we've done here. So we produced uh, Vöhler curves, but also um, element. We did an element mapping on the surface and we did CT scans. Um, and when you take a look on the, on the picture on the right hand side, and you, then you can see how different the results are. So um, you see a very big uh, red uh, specimen with a very high porosity. Obviously, there went something wrong. And to be honest, we took this later on uh, um, out of our evaluations. But also it gives you a kind of indicator um, that um, yeah, that it's not everything the same and it's not completely easy to handle this technology. And to get a better understanding of the mechanical requirements um, we have, uh, which came out of the, our examinations, we um, put everything together uh, in a heat map. So I don't expect that you understand all these points there uh, that you can see them very clear. It's just that I want to show you how many points we have and how we have evaluate everything. So what is a heat map? <clears throat> we, um, we brought the requirements into, into consider, um, correlation. And with this heat map, we had positive correlations, like if the hardness increase, the ultimate strengths increase, for instance, and we had also negative correlations. And um, just to show you some short examples, I've already mentioned there is a positive correlation between the hardness and the ultimate strengths. And we could see this in um, all our results. And the, our personal result was now, or our conclusion out of that, um, was to say, okay, but this correlation we know already from the conventional um, uh, manufacturing. And this means for us in additive manufacturing that we can trust in this technology because the behavior is exactly the same. Um, and so we did more findings like um, how is the hardness correlating to the fatigue strengths, which is in this case a negative correlation. And we went deeper, deeper in the powder meta, uh, metallurgy, um, metallurgy. Um, and uh, the, the colleagues from GKN, they were really fit into this topic. And 
also discussed our results with the Balchin law and put this into correlation and try to understand how the density of a 100% part uh, correlates to the density of a um, printed part. And, and then we took a step ahead and said, okay, but when we are able uh, to understand how the density influence um, the material properties, could it, could it be possible to go a step back and say, okay, I know my process parameters so well that I know which density comes out of it. And when I know the density, then I know the material properties. So this is a kind of look into a glass bowl, I would say. I mean, I know this is very visionary now, but I really like this um, future idea of thinking in additive. Yeah, and um, now we are done with all the results. So uh, we have collected everything. And um, um, in the end, we did also a very good and interesting fract uh, fractography and micro sections uh, together with the BAM. And uh, now you can stay very curious because, um, first of all, you can buy the whole study, but uh, so for those ones who were not joining, but uh, we are writing on a paper and we will publish this. Um, so parts of the results, of course, um, in the practical methodography very soon. So stay curious here. And um, back to um, my headline, because there I was not uh, only talking uh, about ALS at NMG, which we might know all very well. Um, I was also talking about a new alloy from EOS, which is the 2139. So we have, of course, a lot of different materials. And uh, I want to close my presentation um, with our new high strength alloy, which um, yeah, which is the 2139 and the parameter is um, still in development. So the technical readiness level is three and um, we can print this on our um, M290 machine with um, layer thickness of 60 micrometers. And uh, with this alloy now we um, have the great benefits that um, we have an unmatched strength and temperature between 50 and 200 um, grad Celsius. Um, we have here a new high strength aluminum alloy, which is um, robust, um, the one step heat treatment T4 and saving up to 88% in active heat treatment time. And the parts out of this alloy can be also electropolized and anodized. And um, when you have, um, or just to give you an inspiration, and we just starting to do the first parts with that, we think this alloy is very um, good for typical applications in aviation and space industry, but also in the racing industry and in other lightweight designs. And yeah, to give you a, in my last slide a feeling um, to well-known, um, alloys and lightweight, like for instance, the skull alloy, then I can tell you that we have here now developed a higher strength and a higher productivity and more affordable powder. And um, also um, the strength is comparable in room temperature to the wrought alloy uh, 1775, which I think is really impressive. And uh, with this, I want to close my presentation and uh, yeah sorry that i cannot join in person <laughs> and uh, yeah i would stop start my uh, sharing my screen again that you can see me virtually perfect <clears throat> dr schlingmann thank you thank you very much uh, for this very interesting presentation showing your advancements in printing with uh, uh, high strength aluminum alloys uh, to, I personally have an aeros have a 3D printing background. I was fortunate to work uh, intensely with 3D printing during my PhD work. So it's very always very amazing for me to see the advancements. Um, uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, are there any questions? We maybe have we maybe have time for one question from the audience. Are there any questions? 
Well, I do have one, so I take it. <laughs> I can take it. Um, uh, it was astonishing for me to see I'm your going. initial. Your initial uh, can you hear me? Yes. Now I can hear you again. I was uh, gone for a short. Oh, moment. okay. So well, basically, <laughs> I summarized and 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 laudated your presentation. I really liked it because my personal background is also three D printing and additive manufacturing from my PhD work. So so and and I'm allowed to to, to answer the question uh, because. Um, um, uh, <clears throat> we have one question. So uh, I, I thought uh, the initial designs were really impressive. Uh, you showed uh, the designs inspired by nature. I'm just wondering, uh, from the perspective of an engineer, you really have to think out of the box. It's not bars and beams anymore. It's uh, inspired by nature. So do you hire biologists as designers, or what do you do? I mean, where do you get the talent and the ideas for that? Yeah, to be honest, this is a really um, this is really a point, and I think this is also to talk a bit general um, in the branch. This is really the point where we need all to start to enable the people and um, to help the engineers to open the minds and start thinking like this. And I know exactly this from uh, from my first uh, job because all. Um, very good engineers were thinking in uh, forgings and they were thinking in uh, but you cannot produce a part with a hole inside for instance and they were far away from this um biological uh, ideas and um we can help with our additive minds i can say because there we have a a consultant group um, which helps the companies where we are implementing the technology um to start thinking and to open the minds. Um, but I think this is really a point where, yeah, where we all need to grow. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you very much for your presentation. Thanks again for joining in. Please get better Thank soon. You. And um, um, just to let you know and let the audience know, since you're not here, if there are any, any further questions to Dr. Schlingmann, please join us at the Composites United booth. We will take them for you and forward them Thank to you. you later on. And um, Thanks again, uh, get better and bye-bye. Thank you, bye-bye.